So far, we've discussed at length the inner workings of the PIC, how the memory um, is used to store our program, how data is passed around between flash and the cache and RAM. Now we'll start to consider all of the extras that Microchip has given us on the PIC32, the peripherals. So the peripherals are the little add-ons that the SFRs use to control the real world. We'll start simple. This is from chapter seven of our textbook. Let's review how, review how the digital I.O. pins work. The I.O. pins mean the input and output pins. So the PIC is surrounded by pins. When you look at a picture of the pin, the PIC, um, it's got legs all over it. Most of those legs are I.O. pins. Some of the rest of them would be something like power and ground. And they are given names, for instance, like D0 or A0. Um, we refer to them as ports. So when I say port A means the A pins. Um, and that's kind of like a typical nomenclature. We've seen that we've got, um, for instance, F0 uh, is an LED pin. So on inside of the PIC, there's a pin called F0. And we've pre-wired it to an LED to 3.3 volts. Something like that. So when we make the F0 pin low, uh, current can flow into the PIC and the LED will turn on. And when we make F0 high, then no current will flow because both sides of the LED will be at 3.3 volts and the LED will be off. So that's an example of an output. We've also got pin D7. We're using that as an input pin. We've got 3.3 volts to a resistor to a push button to ground. Something like that. D7 is declared as an input pin. When we read um, the port value of D7, and the button is not pushed, we read high, and when the button is pushed, we read low. Some of the digital I.O. pins uh, have special functionalities, like they can be external interrupts. We did that in the stopwatch assignment. D7, though, is not one of those pins. It, it is just a normal I.O. pin. Um, so basically, you can just make these pins inputs or outputs. If they're outputs, you can control if they're high or low. If they're inputs, you can read whether they're high or low. So how do we look at a new peripheral that we haven't learned about yet? and figure out exactly why do uh, special function registers control how this pin works, and what are those special function registers, and what values should we put inside of their bits. To do that, we need to look at the documentation provided by Microchip. The first thing we usually go to is the data sheet. So here's the data sheet for um, the PIC32 uh, family that we're using. And we can go to the specific chapter on IO ports, and they will give us um, this kind of block diagram and show us here are some of the special function registers that exist to manipulate the pin and roughly you know, what's the, the latches and the flip-flops that make it run. And that's all we get in the, in the data sheet. The data sheet doesn't give us any more explanation of what are the special function registers and how to use them and, and, and anything more than just one little paragraph here. So we're never going to use the data sheet for more than just a, a very rough explanation of how a, a peripheral works. Instead, we're going to go to the family reference manual. So on top of the data sheet, uh, Microchip provides a zip file of individual chapters for every peripheral. So here's section 12 that corresponded to section 12 of the data sheet. And now this is a 22 page document that explains in depth how this register, how this uh, peripheral works. So from now on, whenever we learn about a new peripheral, and we're going to do a whole bunch of them in a row, uh, first we'll take a look at the data sheet, then we'll go to the chapter in the Family Reference Manual, figure out exactly how these things work. So how do we read the Family Reference Manual? Well, it starts out with the same block diagram and kind of the pitch, the sales pitch for why do you want this um, peripheral on the pick. Now, every microcontroller out there is going to have digital I.O. pins, so nothing special there. But we have some key features. Uh, the outputs can be open drain. We'll talk about what that means. Uh, you can have a pull-up resistor turned on. Uh, they have uh, set clear and invert uh, versions of the SFRs. We've seen that before, uh, but that's kind of special to the PIC, having these atomic registers. And you can see sometimes it mentions other things, other slew rate control. I don't think our pick has that, but other picks might have that. 
Uh, after that sales pitch, now we get to see what are the special function registers. So we see uh, the tris register, the port register, the lat register. So tris is for controlling whether it's a one, uh, input or output. Port is if it's an input, you can read it to see whether it's high or low. Lat if the pin is an output, whether it's on or off. And here's a here's a special function register we haven't talked about yet. ODC, Open Drain Configuration. Should the pin um, be uh, capable of outputting as an open drain configuration? Um, the AND cell uh, special function register, uh, should this um, uh, pin be using the analog input uh, peripheral, or should it just be digital I.O.? Actually, ours doesn't call it AND cell. Our, 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 uh, our pick calls it AD1 uh, PCFG. Uh, the other picks tend to call them AND cell. So two different versions of how to write this special function register. Uh, the change notification, should um, this pin be capable of generating interrupt uh, when it changes. This is a little different than the external interrupt functionality. A change notification um, pin will call a, an ISR uh, when it changes, but all of the change notification pins call that same function. So the first thing you do inside of that ISR is figure out which pin changed. Unlike the external interrupt pin, one pin controls one function, so it's a little faster. Then we get a detail of uh, all the bit fields inside of the SFR. And you can see that we've got 32 bits in, inside of every SFR, and most of the bits go unused. Just because there's that's just a lot of functionality having 32 bits. Some of the picks allow you to reorganize how the pins are attached. Um, our pick doesn't do that, but that's called peripheral pin select, so we can skip over uh, PPS. More PPS. More PPS. Here's uh, change notification, boundary cell. Uh, we don't have that, I don't think. What happens when you put the pick in sleep in idle mode? We haven't talked about those, but you can put the pick in a low power mode where it essentially doesn't do anything, um, but maybe the peripherals act independently to save power. So that's all we get in the family reference manual chapter. So you can go through and you can read more about the special function registers. Let's review them one more time and talk about the different ways to uh, set the bits. So we have the TRIS register, which stands for tri-state. Um, and it's called TRIS X because we have all the ports. So this would be uh, port A through F, or however many pins the pick has. And um, if the bit is zero, the pin is output. If the bit is a 1, pin is input. Um, so for example, uh, for the F pin, we would say uh, tris f bits dot tris f uh, 0 equals a 0 to make it an output pin. Then we have the lat bits. Lat stands for latch, lat x. Um, if bit is 0, Pin is low, the one pin is high. Only true if the tris is one. Or sorry, zero. It's an output pin. So if we wanted to turn this LED on, we would want to make this voltage off. So we would say uh, lat f bits dot lat f zero equals zero. That would make current flow into the pick and the LED would turn on. Um, for the input pin, let's figure out is the pin high or low? That's the port register. Port X. Um, so if a bit is zero, the pin is low. Not because we're making it low, but because the external circuit is making it low. If the bit is a one, the pin is high. Um, so we could say if uh, port D bits. Now somebody in microchip, uh, when they wrote the H file for this PIC32 um, and all the PIC32s, decided to break their naming convention here. So instead of saying port D bits dot port D7, they, just call, they decided to call this RD7. Um, so I don't know why they went from port to R. But 
uh, we could look inside the uh, H file to see exactly where the structure is defined and maybe there's a comment that says why they did this. I don't know. Um, but we can say if port dbits equals double equals for a comparisons, uh, if it equals zero, that means the button is pushed. So we would do whatever happens when the button is pushed. Okay, on microcontrollers, we're always concerned about uh, economy of scale. So if we had, I don't know, 10 buttons on this microcontroller and we we're going to make a million units, we would have to have 10 million 10K resistors. Those might cost, well, actually 10K resistors are very, very cheap, but uh, that would be money. And we'd have to, on our printed circuit board, make space for them and solder them on. So it's a lot of work. Um, inside of the pick, instead of uh, just reading this button and having an external pull-up resistor, we can enable an internal pull-up resistor. Um, so that special function register, go back and take a look. I'm just scrolling through all of the SFRs. Um. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. I've gone back to the family reference manual. And I look for uh, pull up because I know there's a special function register that allows us to do an internal pull up. And it's part of the change notification. And the special function register is called CNPUE. So I can use the CNPUE bits CNPUE um, if it is one enable a pull up for it. Okay, when you look at the picture of the pick some of the pins will be called CN. So in addition to be called, being called um, F0, F0 might also be a CNX bit. Uh, so if we have, for instance, CN0, the pin CN0, and we want to add its external, its internal pull-up resistor, we could say CNPUE bits dot uh, CNPU, uh, actually it's probably CN0 equals one, and that would turn on an internal pull-up resistor for that CN0 pin. We'd have to go back to look at the picture of the pick to figure out which pin is CN0 to do that. That might save us you know, a tenth of a penny. Over the course of a million units, we save $100,000. Okay, that's one reason you might want a change notification. Another is that um, for our output pins, uh, for instance, like F0, when we set lat to 0 or 1, we're getting 0 volts and 3.3 volts. Occasionally, though, we might want to output even more or maybe even less voltage. So to output less voltage, we could build a voltage divider here. But how do we output more voltage? Well, we would want to use open drain configuration. So open drain means that our pin doesn't really go to the output of the chip anymore. Instead, it would go to the base of a transistor. So here's inside of the pick. And when we tell our pin to go high and low, it's controlling the base of this transistor, which means when the pin is high, this switch is closed, so the output would see zero volts. But when the pin is low, now the gate is uh, is op yeah, it's open, so no current will flow. And what that means is that this voltage will float. Floating is generally bad. That means it's not hooked up to ground, it's not hooked up to power, it's just some wandering voltage. How do you prevent a floating pin from wandering, well, you add a resistor up to some voltage. And this voltage here, when the pin's in float condition, will now output the positive voltage. 
just like our uh, button here, um, no current goes into our pin, so the voltage at that point is just dependent on the pull-up resistor to whatever voltage that is. Now we would add a pull-up resistor to whatever voltage we wanted, and we can output whatever we want. Unfortunately for the pick, the max is 5.5 volts, so really you're just choosing between do I want to output 3.3 volts or 5 volts, but that's how we can talk to a 5-volt chip that maybe doesn't understand 3.3. So you can add your own external 1K resistor or whatever pull-up resistor you want, or you could also turn on the uh, internal pull-up resistor. Uh, of course, the internal pull-up resistor would just mean you always output 3.3 volts, so that doesn't seem very useful. Um, so you would physically add your own external pull-up resistor to some voltage between 0 and 5.5, and now the pin can output those two voltages, 0 and 5.5. Um, then there's all these interrupt capabilities. We've already talked about uh, interrupts, so now you can figure out how to use an interrupt for change notification. It's going to be by setting up more special function registers, but I don't know if we'll ever do that in this class. So the key things you need to know are we've got tris, lat, port, uh, the pull-up resistor enable, and ODC bits for open drain configuration. So that was pretty much chapter seven of the textbook talking about the digital I.O. pins.